right, I'm going to do a quick video here, hopefully, just to show you uh, some of the differences or, or slight issues I ran into when installing this Atlas Garage Pro uh, 9000 lift. Uh, there's some videos already out there for the Atlas 8000 four post. Uh, would definitely watch those. They helped me out a ton, really couldn't have done it without those. The uh, instructions are absolutely horrible, as you'll hear other people mention too, but uh, there's basically no details, and it seems like they're trying to use like one manual for a whole bunch of different lifts, which have you know little differences that'll really throw you off. But uh, anyways, wanted to go over this, and then also I got the, uh, the 6K jacks here, so I'll talk a little bit about those too, but Main thing is, uh, I was just gonna, again, kind of cover the things that I ran into where I still ran into questions or issues. Um, I guess I'll mention first, if you're thinking about uh, paying somebody to do this, it'd probably be worth it to, to do it. Um, I mean, this really isn't that hard. It's it's just, a, it's kind of a matter of if you have the patience to, to, to put all this together and deal with the heavy, heavy ramps. Um, we did use a forklift to get these off the trailer and installed on here and that helped out big time. I know a lot of people use engine mounts or other similar type hoists, but uh, they're very heavy and awkward to deal with even with, we had uh, five or six people here helping. So it ended up taking us about six hours, but that was with a lot of prep work too. But anyways, could certainly be done a, a lot quicker and the professionals I think do it in a, in a few hours. So. Anyways, consider that. Um, but putting it together, the as most people have talked about, it's it's in general pretty straightforward. And that you got the you got the the four columns here on the the edges, and then you got these cross member rails here that get in, inserted into them. So it's it's almost kind of like putting together the headboard and baseboard of a bed with rails in between it. That's kind of the basics of how this is assembled. But uh, you got the ladder, the, the hanging safety lock ladder, just like the uh, 8000 model here also. Um, so that's basics of it. Uh, first thing I think we ran into was kind of questioning the position of these uh, these top caps here. So basically the, the pointed edge uh, goes to the inside. Um, that kind of faces inside both uh, towards the ramps and then also inside in terms of uh, kind of pointing at each other from the, the inside. But once you really take a closer look at it, when you see the, the cables in here, it'll, it'll make sense to line it up with the the pulleys that are down here in the, the cross members. Um, there was some talk to and some confusion, I think, on uh, where the bolts in these top plates go. So I still really don't know, but I chose to go with one nut on the bottom and one nut on the on the top for the top plates. Uh, the main reason is, is I don't, I don't really know why they would give you two washers if that wasn't the intent, but I know other videos show that it's supposed to be both of them on the top, but I don't know, to me this just seemed like a more secure way to do it. I don't know if there's something I'm overlooking here or a downside, but it certainly seems to, to work, work fine here. Um, to get the, the cables routed up there, you have to be a little bit careful when putting on on the ramps here. Um, you can see they're, they're bolted here, but before you, you bolt these down, you, you want to get this cable routed out to the, to the edges of all four corners. So you'll see there's no way to get this cable kind of around the corner here from the inside um, with, the, with the ramp bolted. Down. So we actually had to unbolt these and basically you just lift up the ramp slightly and then from the bottom uh, You'll be able to snake the cable around this gap Right here um, 
So, so right now you can see th these two frame members are butted up against each other, but if, if you can lift up the ramp just a little bit and scoot the ramp back just a little bit, you'll be able to get that, uh, that cable out of here. And really, I'm not showing you from the best spot here because the issue is actually on the other side. So, sorry, it's actually uh, coming from here. So, you can see you got to get the cable through there, and the uh, bottom is covered covered up here. So, again, you want to create a gap between these two frame members right here to where you can be able to route this cable to come out here and then up into the... The, the pulleys here and then it goes all the way up to the top and the reason it's difficult is at the very top where it connects you have the long solid solid rod piece right there so to try to route that around pulleys and stuff you just you can't do it so you got to have that that gap to push the, the cable through so hopefully that makes sense um, the other big thing that you want to watch when moving these ramps, and I don't know if I can get a good angle on it or any angle on it here. No, nope, I can't get an angle, but inside of these ramps are the pulleys. And these pulleys will actually, so here's the pulleys, but they will stick out into this cross member here you know, a, a good, uh, it's about a, about an inch, inch and a half, because uh, that's what this cable is lined up with. So when you're setting these ramps down onto this cross member, you definitely want to, you know, be careful not to just kind of drop them on there, because otherwise you'll end up hitting the, hitting the pulleys. They're, they're pretty beefy, so I don't know if it'd really do any harm, but uh, wouldn't be a a good thing and then same thing when you're snaking this cable through there you know be mindful when you're picking up the ramps and stuff that that those pulleys are, are sticking out uh, into that that frame number also um, here's a little uh, grease zerk that goes in uh, I found these at the end we didn't really know where they went there wasn't any clear info but there's eight of them so they go inside these uh these pulley retainers here uh, the legs here's the direction the legs will face so the the wide side points towards the inside of the of the lift um, also when i was putting these main main cross members on between the posts. This model comes with, with a beauty plate here that has these these stickers on it. So it, it was pretty obvious and that you'd think you'd want the, the stickers facing out, which, which did end up being the case. But um, the thing that just made it a little confusing was the other videos mentioned that the outside edge of these cross members needs to be where the eye bolt is. And there's no eye bolt here, um, but you, you would see if you take these uh, covers off that the eye bolt is sitting right, right back there. So it's just a little point of confusion to save you, save you some time, but that's the direction they're supposed to face. So it's the same thing on the other end here too. You got the covered side facing it out and you got the open side facing to the to the inside uh, hydraulic stuff is pretty much the same here so here's the connection uh, coming out of the, the ramp and then it comes up into the uh, hydraulic motor here uh, so really that's the same as other info or from other videos. Uh, I did notice this this tube here um, that goes back into the into the reservoir there that 
was mentioned to just kind of be sitting up underneath here, but actually, at least on this model, it goes into a fitting that comes out, out the side of the hydraulic piston here. So I think it's a, just a breather for that, that piston. All right, uh, the other big thing that caused us some issues, and this one probably slowed us down the most, really, was just trying to figure out um, this here assembly. So basically there's a, a, a rod that gets inserted right here, and it goes all the way down the length of the, the ramp or the or the runway here, so it's actually two pieces. One goes in from the front, one goes in from the back, and in the center, there's a, a piece that connects the two rods. So you, you definitely do wanna make sure to follow the directions um, initially at this step for inserting those rods. You do need six feet in front of the lift and nine feet um, in back of the lift, but uh, that, that was fairly straightforward and that's kind of covered in other videos too but um the, again the instructions are just horrible it doesn't really mention anything much about it uh but again back to this um assembly here for the locking mechanism we struggled with where, where these himes went so we ended up putting one on the back and one on the front that just seemed to keep these um straight or in line uh, i've seen other videos that say to put this more at like a 12 o'clock uh, angle mine mine's uh more at the 11 o'clock uh, but but it works really good um, the problem was is that this cover plate interferes with this mechanism uh, normally this would be attached to that cover plate. I just ended up cutting them off. So you can see it has a, a hole there that is supposed to, I, I don't know, I guess give you a view of what's going on here. It's, it's really too small for this assembly here and it just gets snagged up on it. There's also a bolt right behind the linkage there, which uh, kind of gets in the way also. So. Don't know that I really have this the ideal way, but this is what worked for us and it, it's working well. So the upper upper side with the long arm going this direction uh, has the heim on the outside and the lower with the short rod has the All right, so anyways, this is how I ended up doing mine and it, again, it works, it works well. Uh, the cover plates, for the pulleys here, it's, um, this is kind of nice. The, on this model, it just pulls back and you can, can see everything in here. Um, when routing this cable up through here, kind of the trick was, again, you need to get this you know, long, solid piece at the top of the cable around these two pulleys down here, which is a little bit difficult, but the, the trick was to run it right, right through here where these springs are. So you could kind of push back these springs and it would give you enough gap to get that end piece through and uh, route this up here accordingly. You'll see in some of the videos, people talk about needing to, to take off uh, the pulley or similar, uh, but we didn't have to do that on on any of the ends and actually we thought we needed to and we tried pulling out the pulley and that became a little bit of a of a mess it's a lot of pieces to to try to line back up together so uh we we'll do everything you can to try to get that piece through here all right um this model has the casters this is pretty much the same ones that seen on other ones but they attach to this outside um, part here and just put leverage down on the caster when you when you lower the the ramps down onto them so they worked 
pretty good, but this thing is still really heavy and really took a, a few people to move, move it around. Uh, let's see. Sorry, I'm just kind of randomly trying to find things to talk about here because I don't have a plan for this video, but back to this hydraulic stuff here. This is a little bit weird in the, see, here's the outer, outer hose, which connects <laughs> through the edge, through this elbow fitting. So it, it, I think this really should be double nutted. They don't give you a nut for this other, other side. So we just put the nut on the inside here to, to hold the, the nipple that's coming coming through and you, you just want to make sure that you do bring it through enough so that when you're tightening this side of the fitting that you can actually get it truly tight and it warns you not to over torque them but um, we had a pretty good leak initially so I would torque these up pretty pretty good. Um, there was an extra copper washer which again, in the other video, or one of the other videos mentions having that also. I had the same thing. There was an extra copper washer that I never found a, a logical place to go to on this hydraulic setup. They, they give you two and the only one you need goes uh, right up here to help create the seal. All right, so at the front safety locks, like I was saying with these this Heim assembly here, it's, it's the exact same story here. I ended up doing the lower one in the back and the upper one on the top. Um, but but then in the end, this is where I cut this uh, plate, this or this cover. I just ended up cutting it right here to fully expose this section here because even, even with the way I did it, which seemed to give us the most clearance, it did end up kind of binding up on that cover which was preventing the safety latches uh, from engaging. So you definitely don't want that. So again, I just, I just got rid of it all, all together. Most lifts have this, this portion kind of open anyway, so it doesn't bother me. All right, the, um, the adjustments for the lift, I've, there's really no good info on them either. So there's basically two things you gotta adjust is these here safety latch um, cutouts here. You need to get them the same height on all four corners. So I ended up in the end um, basically setting, raising the lift up and then setting it back down to get the lock to engage but you want to do it really slowly and see which one of your columns uh, sits down on the lock first. So, you know, you'll visibly be able to see the ramps when they're coming down. So you'll be able to see which, which corner contacts, uh, you know, when the safety latch comes down and hits this cutout here, you'll stop instantly. And, and then you can go around to the other corners. So, so in my case, it was the one here on the, with the power unit hit first. So I went to all three corners then. And what you would do then is you just loosen the, the nut at the top here. So it's gonna be this outer one here. And then also, you know, you're gonna have to loosen the bolt that's in, inside of here too, the jam nut on the other side. But um, once that's loose, then you can actually uh, go ahead and just pick up with your hand on, on this ladder here. So, so, you know, just put your hand in there and pick up on it. And I would then just lift it with, the ha with my hand and tighten that upper bolt so that now this column, it, you know, is gonna be touching the, the lock, the safety latch is gonna be touching the same uh, cutout you know, at the same same height and then snug everything back down at the top. So then you just go and do that for, for all three corners. Um, I didn't have any real issues with the overall level. My garage floor's 
pretty level. So that, that wasn't really an issue for me, but you still might have to make some adjustments to each of those to then get it level um, to your garage floor. The, the other adjustment that you might need to do is for the actual cables here. So I had a little bit tougher time with these. I, I could tell when I was picking the jack uh, or, or picking the lift up and up and down, you know, that one corner or the, the, the front or the back seemed to be, you know, picking up or sitting down quicker than the corresponding corners. So the only thing that I could come up that seemed to help a bit, but I, I couldn't quite get all of it out for, for the cables when it's not sitting on the latches was basically to just lift it up and then again, set it down on the safety um, latches here and stop the instant it hits a safety latch. And then you can go around and check the, you know, check the tension of each one of these, these cables. And you'll likely find that, that some of the corners that are, you know, kind of got a little more slack in them are coming down, um, you know, later than the other one. So, so you can, Basically just, again, go to the top here, but this time on the cable assembly and loosen the jam nut on the bottom and then uh, tighten the, the top nut until this, this cable here uh, becomes equally snug on all four corners. And that's how, how I was able to get it the, the closest. I think right now it's just my front comes down and then the back of the lift comes down just a little bit, a little bit after the front. But I'm gonna go with that. Um, the the wheel stops here. One thing to note about these is this is you know this is an extra plate that you're mounting on top of the ramp here. So when you're looking for bolts to mount this thing, these, these bolts here for these four, four bolts for the two stops here are the long bolts, whereas the ones in the rear, it doesn't have that, that plate there. So these are gonna be the, the shorter bolts in the back. So shorter in the back, uh, longer in the front. All right. I think the last thing here, again, I, I got this, the 6,000 pound um, air over hydraulic jacks, and I was kind of concerned about getting them, you know, for them to be in the way, but this is the longer, longer uh, lift compared to others. So, you know, you got lots of room to slide these, these out from under, underneath. So I don't think they're really gonna get in the way. <clears throat> but then I was also just kind of worried if they did get in the way, how was I gonna, you know, move these things around? Uh, they're they're rated at I think it's like 275 pounds, so not very easy to move these, and even getting them out of their little shipping crates that they come in is is really kind of awkward. So, long story short, the trick here: uh, get yourself a furniture dolly uh, when you when you pull it out of the crate that they come in. I'll I'll show you. It. Here's the crate for it. Just set them on one of these furniture dollies. Because what, what you can do then is just lift up the, the lift and get the furniture dolly, or, ro or in this case to install them, you'd be rolling the jack on the furniture dolly into the center here. You can lower your ramps all the way down. Then uh, you'd have this dolly turned sideways. So, you know, right now um, it's going so that the, the jack would sit in between. So you would just rotate the jack this direction. So that way, when you lower the, the ramp, obviously it's not crushing your jack. But the idea is just to get it in the center there. Um, that then you can rotate the, the dolly and then pick up 
the lift after adjusting the, uh, the width here. Basically, this assembly here moves in and out. You can see you can see right here, this moves in and out so that you can align these rollers um, to, to your lift. So anyways, the point is, is it actually just works really nice. And if I ever need to take these, these out, now I'll just lower it down onto the furniture jack, turn it, turn it sideways, lift the jack or lift the lift up and pull my ramps out. So I won't even have to, to pick up anything. Um, I haven't plumbed these up yet to, to try them, but uh, that's my my next step here. But at least I know that I can can get them out of the way here pretty easy. All right, so I think that's it.